In this lesson, we're going to take a look at horizontal asymptotes, which is something else we can study by using limits. Just like with vertical asymptotes, we'll begin by taking a look at a limit definition of a horizontal asymptote, and we'll look at a method for finding these analytically. Let's begin with our limit definition. We'll start with an example so we can recall what a horizontal asymptote looks like. We'll use the same example we used in our study of vertical asymptotes. We'll start with the one over x squared function. There's its graph. Notice what happens as we move further and further to the left or to the right on the graph. What we find in this case is that the graph is getting closer and closer to the line y equals zero, or in other words, the x-axis. So what we say in this case is that that line, y equals zero, is a horizontal asymptote of one over x squared. So now we're looking at what happens as we move further and further and further to the left or to the right without stopping. That idea allows us to define horizontal asymptotes in terms of limits. So let's say we have a function f, and let's say we observe that the limit as x approaches infinity of this function is some number we'll call k. So in other words, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger in the positive direction, we find that f of x is getting closer and closer to this number k. Or we might see that happening in the negative direction, so that as x approaches negative infinity, f of x equals k. As long as at least one of those things happens, we say that the line y equals k, a horizontal line, is a horizontal asymptote of the function f. It can happen, and often does happen, that both of these happen. And in that case, we still have a horizontal asymptote at y equals k. So that's the definition of a horizontal asymptote using limits. Let's take a look at how we can apply it to find horizontal asymptotes analytically. Here we need to think about what we might call the growth rate of a function. So typically when we find a function that has a horizontal asymptote, it will be some kind of quotient function. So it'll have a numerator and a denominator. And what matters for finding horizontal asymptotes is how quickly the numerator and denominator grow relative to each other. And there are three possibilities here. One possibility is that the numerator grows faster than the denominator. So as x gets bigger and bigger, the numerator of our function gets bigger more quickly than the denominator does. In that case, the function will not have a horizontal asymptote. We'll look in a moment at how to figure out whether the numerator or denominator is growing faster. But this is what happens if the numerator grows faster. The second possibility is that the numerator and the denominator grow at the same rate. And in that case, we need to look at some of the coefficients that appear in the numerator and the denominator. We'll take a look at that in detail in a moment. This is kind of the most complicated of the three cases. The third possibility, as you might expect, is that the numerator grows more slowly than the denominator. And in this case, it doesn't really matter what else is going on with the numerator and the denominator. The line y equals zero is guaranteed then to be the only horizontal asymptote of the function. So those are the three possibilities. Now, in order to figure out which one applies to a given function, we need to know how to figure out the growth rates of at least polynomial functions, which is what we'll concentrate on here. So we're going to concentrate on polynomials because most of the quotient functions we deal with have polynomials for their numerators and denominators. By the way, you might recall functions like this, quotients of polynomial functions are called rational functions. And what matters for figuring out the rate at which a polynomial function grows is its leading term. And you can find the leading term of a polynomial by putting it in descending order. Then the, polynomial, the leading term will be the first term written there. So what this means is that when we're looking for a horizontal asymptote, at least if we have a rational function, 
All we need to look at are the leading terms of the numerator and the denominator. We can ignore the rest. We can then do some algebraic work to simplify in order to figure out the function's horizontal asymptote. So let's take a look at a few examples of how this goes. Here's the first example. We're gonna find the horizontal asymptote of the function defined by this expression you see here, 2x squared plus 5x plus 7 over negative 3x squared minus 2. Notice this is a rational function. So we're going to ignore everything except for the leading terms of the numerator and the denominator. What we're looking at here, what we're trying to find is this limit because we're trying to find a horizontal asymptote. And a horizontal asymptote is defined as a limit as x approaches infinity or negative infinity. So let's look at this limit here. And like I said, we're gonna ignore everything but the leading terms. These two limits are equal to each other. The function expressions aren't equivalent, but as long as we're looking at a limit as x approaches infinity, these two will be the same. The rest of the terms don't matter. Now you can see that function expression we have there, 2x squared over negative 3x squared, can be simplified. The x squared factors can be canceled, and we get 2 over negative 3. Now that's a limit of a constant function. And it, it's a limit as x approaches infinity, but the value of x doesn't change the value of 2 over negative 3. That's always the same. So that limit will be equal to negative 2 thirds. This means that the line y equals negative 2 thirds is a horizontal asymptote of our function. And we were able to find that just by using a little bit of what we know about limits, plus this principle about the growth rate of a polynomial function being determined by its leading terms. By the way, we've, I've only looked here at the limit as x approaches positive infinity. You might ask, well, what about what happens as x approaches negative infinity? Well, when we're dealing with a rational function like we have here, we never have more than one horizontal asymptote, just a principle about rational functions. So we don't need to worry about the limit as x approaches negative infinity, we'll get the same thing. It can sometimes happen that you get different behavior as x approaches positive or negative infinity. And in those cases, the best way to deal with the function is to look at its graph. Let's take a look at a second example involving a rational function though. We'll find the horizontal asymptote of this function here, three x to the power four over x to the power five minus six x squared plus two. And again, let's look at the leading terms and the leading coefficients. So using the same kind of principle we used last time, we know that these two limits are going to be equal to each other. I've ignored all but the leading term of the numerator and the denominator. And as long as we're looking at a limit as x approaches infinity, these two limits will be equivalent. If we simplify what we've got there, we end up with three over x. Now, here we need to reason a little bit. We can't rely entirely on the symbols to do our work for us, but think about what's gonna happen as x gets bigger and bigger. 3 over x, then, is going to have a constant numerator, it's always the same, and a denominator that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, what happens when a fraction's denominator keeps getting bigger? If its numerator doesn't change, the value of the whole thing gets closer and closer to zero. Thus, the value of that limit is zero, which means that the line y equals zero is this function's horizontal asymptote. So here too, we're relying on stuff about growth rates of polynomial functions. And in this case, because the denominator grows faster than the numerator, y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote. Let's take another look then at what to do if we're, we have a function that doesn't involve polynomials. So here are some things to keep in mind when you're dealing with this sort of situation. Exponential functions, as long as the base of the power in question is greater than one, always grow faster than polynomial functions. So if you see something like two to the power x or e to the power x or anything like that, 
somewhere in your function, that's going to grow very, very quickly, quicker than any polynomial around it. Logarithmic functions always grow more slowly than polynomial functions. And when you're dealing with the sine and cosine functions in the context of looking for horizontal asymptotes, you can basically treat them as though they are constant. And that's because their values always hover between negative one and one. They never get further out from that. And keeping these things in mind will help you to find horizontal asymptotes of functions that don't just involve quotients of polynomials. Here's an example involving an exponential function. Let's say we've got a function f of x defined by e to the power 2x plus 5x over 3x to the power 4 plus 2x squared. Now, we're going to borrow the principle we were using a moment ago when dealing with polynomial quotients. We're going to look only at the fastest growing terms in the numerator and the denominator. In the denominator, which is a polynomial here, that will be the leading term, 3x to the power 4. In the numerator, the fastest growing term is going to be the exponential term, e to the power 2x. That always grows faster than any polynomial. So we're going to ignore 5x in the numerator and look only at e to the power 2x. And in the denominator, we can ignore 2x squared. So this limit that we're interested in here to find a horizontal asymptote is equivalent to this limit where we've cut out everything but e to the power 2x in the numerator and 3x to the power 4 in the denominator. That limit is equal to positive infinity. Because, again, e to the power 2x gets bigger much, much more quickly than 3x to the power 4. So as x gets bigger and bigger, that numerator is going to get bigger and bigger, and the whole fraction then gets bigger and bigger as well. So it approaches positive infinity. So we're relying here on the fact that e to the power 2x grows faster than 3x to the power 4. So the numerator gets much bigger than the denominator in this case, and that makes the whole fraction get bigger and bigger. Here's one more example. Oh, sorry. What we can say here then is that the limit as x approaches infinity of this function is infinity. But in this case, we get different behavior if x approaches negative infinity. We can't assume that the horizontal asymptote in each direction is going to be the same because we're not dealing with simply polynomials here. We've got that exponential term. And the reason for this, if you think about how exponential functions work, as x gets more and more negative, e to the power 2x gets closer and closer to zero. Think about the typical graph of an exponential function. As it moves off to the left, it gets closer and closer to the x-axis, the line y equals zero. So as x approaches negative infinity in this case, again, we only need to look at the, the fastest growing terms in the numerator and the denominator, but that's going to be equal to zero. Because here, the numerator is getting closer and closer to zero. And when a fraction's numerator gets closer and closer to zero, the whole thing gets closer and closer to zero. So in this case, the line y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote of our function but in one direction only. It's a horizontal asymptote only going off to the left, not going off to the right. 